because of where we are, because of glory, because of what Dr. Franklin has set for this house and for this conference and the word of the Lord for this conference, the particular scripture in Numbers chapter number 13, verse number 30, says that Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. That's from the NIV. Yours might read slightly differently, but that's all I need right there. Right. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I do honor the Lord for the pastor of this house, Dr. Franklin. Can you clap your hands and please stop for him? I was, Dr. Franklin, I was asleep yesterday morning. And you know how sometimes that right before you wake up, you have start having dreams right before you wake up. I don't know how long the dream lasted, but I was in a dream. And I had been asking God, what was I supposed to say? And I knew part of what I was supposed to say, but God gave me the actual title for the message yesterday morning while I was asleep in my dream. Wow. Mm. Can I tell y'all what he told me? He said, I want you to ask the church this question because he said there are people that are sitting there today who are asking me this question. The question is how long must I be in transition? Wow. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Am, I, am I talking to anybody here? Ever you've been asking God, how long must I be in transition? Mm. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to visit back to my Baptist roots and give you a subtitle. And I just want to share with you from the thought, trust the process. All right. Wow. Yeah. Trust, trust, trust the process. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the Risk Takers Conference. And I came in on Friday. I know traditionally a lot of times, Dr. Franklin, the, the guest speakers don't come until their night. They don't come until their day, but I, I felt compelled, and, and that's nothing against them. Sometimes their schedules don't allow it, whatever, but I felt compelled that I needed to be here, the, you know, on Friday night when it started. Amen. And I didn't really fully understand why I needed to be here. I just knew that I needed to be here. Well, as Bishop got up and he began to preach on Friday night, he was preaching about the promise, the problem, and the provision. Mm. Yeah. Y'all remember that, don't yeah. you? Yeah. The problem, the promise, and the provision. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, while he was while he was preaching, I began to hear something in my spirit. God said, I sent you here to talk to the church about one more P. <laughs> one more P. What P is that? It's a P called process. All right, all right. All right. He told me to tell somebody in here, you're going to have to learn how to trust the process. Do I have a talk back church? Yeah. God. You know, when you walk into a courtroom, let me work through right here. If you walk into a courtroom, there is language, Dr. Sailor, there's language that they can use in a courtroom. There are words like jurisprudence and habeas corpus. And when most of us, the, the regular everyday people won't understand that language. Am I talking right? We don't understand it because it doesn't fall within our field. But now you, you, you would be hard pressed to go to church anywhere and not hear terminology like shifting. Mm. Not hear terminology like transition. Mm. Not hear terminology like process. Hey, God. And not hear terminology like season. You know, but it bothers me because so many people are talking about seasons where they don't understand season. All right. Mm. Now, they're talking about season, but they don't understand season. They're just using it because it's a word that we use in church. But ladies and gentlemen, you've got to begin to understand that God works. When God starts doing stuff, God works in season. You know, when we talk about that word transition, let me work transition for a minute. You know, whenever we start losing stuff, Losing members of a church? What does the pastor say? Our church is in 
Transition. Thank y'all for helping me preach. When your money starts getting funny and your change starts getting strange, you start telling the, well, I'm in a little period of transition. Ah, when somebody walks out of your life that uh, you didn't even expect them to leave, you tell somebody, well, I'm in a period of transition. Yeah, transition is a part of life. It's a, it's a word that is a part of the church, and we have taken it and given it its own definition. But I need you to understand these words, I think we use these words in particular because they actually relate to our God. How do they relate to our God? Every one of the words I just used, El Lavora, talks about progression. That's good. That's good. Uh, if you understand our God, you understand that our God is a progressive God. Let me talk right there. If you don't believe me, look at the very human experience. Oh, God. Look at the very human experience. When a baby is born, it's born and it's in the arms. It can't walk for itself. It can't talk for itself. All the best it can do is make it. They cry and smile just a little bit. But ladies and gentlemen, even when the baby is born and it's smiling and it cries, sooner or later, if it keeps on going through the process, going through the transition, it will get to a place where it progresses from being in the arm to walking. I'm trying to talk to somebody right here. Because you don't understand where you are right now, but your God has you in a place of process. And the process is trying to develop you and bring you into progress. That's good word, sir. You know what I think? I think sometimes we as believers tend to forget that when God does something, he generally starts it off not in the way we expect it. He starts it off as a seed. Yeah. Let me preach my way through this. He usually starts it out as a seed. Because one thing about God, God again loves process and he loves progress. If God really wanted to, he's big enough that he could turn around and turn things into whatever he wants to turn them into overnight. But the God that we serve tends to start things off as a seed. Some of y'all been praying for oak trees and all God gave you was an acorn. We like control. Mm. 
That's good. Can you hear nobody? That's good. Can you be honest with yourself and say, I like to have control? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> and you know, I'm going to mess up right here. Because mm -hmm. some of y'all missed what just happened before I took the platform. Dr. Franklin said that many of you need to give God another yes. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear him say that? He said you need to give God another yes. He said you need to give God another. Yes. Well, here's the problem. The moment you gave God a yes, you relinquished control of your life to God. That's good. The moment you gave God a yes, you relinquished all your control. So why you sitting up here tripping, wondering what's happening in your life? You were the one who relinquished your control. When you came down to this altar and you said yes, you were like, watch this. Many times we're under spiritual anesthesia. We're saying yes and not really realize what we're saying yes for. But I come to tell you, listen, God told me to tell somebody today, you can't just say yes to the end result. You got to say yes to everything in between. That's good, sir. The reason why so many saints are quitting now, down over there, the reason why they quit, because they said yes to the end result, but they didn't say yes to the process. All right, all right. They said yes to the end. You know, when you saw yourself in that in that big house, when you saw yourself married with, with kids, you saw yourself having a good job, you saw things being wonderful in your life, you saw yourself being happy, but what you did not realize is that when you were saying yes to that, you were saying yes to everything that it was going to take to get you to that place. Because, oh, God, oh, God, the God that we serve develops you through your experiences.
Listen, I need somebody to get this. When you are in transitional seasons of your life, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand, when you're in your transition, while you're in your transition, real life and real issues won't let up. Y'all should have hollered back at me. I said, real life and real issues will not let up. Maybe I'm not talking to everybody. Maybe I'm talking to one or two people that know what I'm talking about. That every time you turn around, let me say it like this. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Yes. Just when you get your body to start acting right, then everything else starts going crazy. Yes. Real life happens when you are in the position of transition. But let me help you right here. I need you to understand that when you're in transition and real life keeps happening and real issues keep happening, it teaches you how to keep moving and to press forward in the midst of adverse situations. Lord have mercy. Oh, come on, talk long. The reason why God is allowing some of this stuff to happen to you, he's allowing it because if he didn't allow it, he would never push you. He would never move out of the place where you been all right. You wonder why the relationship fell apart. You wouldn't be where you are right now if the relationship hadn't got real good and messy. Oh God. God had to upset some stuff in your life because it pushed you in a direction that was forward and not backwards. Because if you look at your life, you've always been going backwards. You said you were going forward, but you were going two steps forward then. But I come to tell you, God's letting you experience some of the pain you've experienced, but it's pushing you forward. Yes, 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 as the why. Are y'all hearing me? Uh -huh. The when is important. I said the when is important. Look at this. In Deuteronomy chapter number one, verse number two, it says these words. It tells us Moses is talking to the people and he says to the people, ladies and gentlemen, this journey that we were supposed to take was only an 11 day journey. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Somebody said 11 days. 11 days. It was only supposed to be, what? 11, 11 days. It turned into 40 years. Let me give you an admonishment. I want to admonish the house of God to be careful in this hour, in this season, that you don't miss your window of opportunity. Hey, God. Because Moses said to them, it was only supposed to take 11 days. It took you 40 years because of self-inflicted delays. That's good. Wow. Yes. 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 Wow. See, people don't want to be honest in church. Come on. Amen. Can we, can we be honest? Yeah, yeah. We like it like we like it. Uh -huh. We like what we want, when we want, how we want. And some of y'all think I'm talking about a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about everything in our life. And we will do what we want to do to get what we want when we want it. All right. Yeah. That's the truth. Watch this. Moses says, he tells the people, he says, but look here. Your problem was you were afraid to go up when God told you to go up. Wow. Mm. Some of y'all sitting in here right now, you were afraid to make your move when God told you to make your move. You were afraid to step forward when God told you to step forward. And then when you did finally step forward, you found yourself in a battle that was unnecessary. Because in that window of the space of time that they were in, when God said move, at that moment, they were supposed to move. Had they moved, the battle would not have been so hard. Had they moved, when they were supposed to move, things wouldn't have been so difficult. Had they moved when they were supposed to move, people would not have died. Some of y'all thought that it was the devil. No, it wasn't the devil. It was you who didn't move when God said. Yes, sir. All right. Yes. All right, now. I 
Can't hear nobody there. Yeah. Self-inflicted <laughs> delays. Mm -hmm. yeah, Hard-headed. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm the only one who's been hard-headed. Nope. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And sometimes, watch this, the enemy loves to play back. The, I hear God right now. He loves to play back the moments when you did those self-inflicted delays. And now you got to live not only with the delay itself, but now you got to live with the regret of the choices that you made. But I came here today as a prophet of God to release somebody from the spirit of regret. You don't have to live in regret not another day of your life. Don't go the distance of the Philistines. I need you to go another way. Because watch this. 
if they go that way, when they see war, they'll change their mind and want to go back to Egypt. But Egypt was never my plan for them. Egypt was just a holy place. I wish I had a church. I said Egypt was just a holy place. It was a set up place. Cause, oh, do I have my Bible back? Yeah, sure I do. I'm going to show you how Egypt was just a holy place. And it was a setup. Because when they got there, there was only a few of them there. But by the time they came out, there were hundreds of thousands to millions of people that were coming out as Hebrew people. Wait a minute. Here's the shout. The Bible said these words. The more the Pharaoh oppressed them. More. 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 God have mercy. The more the Pharaoh oppressed them. The more they grew. The more the Pharaoh oppressed them, the more they expanded, the more they were oppressed, the bigger they got it. I came here to preach to somebody and say the more they talk about you, the more they lie on you, the more they will oppress you. Guess what? You're getting ready to be enlarged. That's it. I was East Point, and my uncle and my aunt live out in Conyers. And my cousin and my two 80 year old aunts, they weren't 80 at the time, but they're 80 now, and they're twins, we were all going out to my aunt and uncle's house in Conyers. And I needed to take my car because I had somewhere to go after that. So I left a little bit after them. Here's the thing, here's the thing. They've been to my aunt and uncle's house many times before. Stay with me for a moment. They've been there. Many times before, I had never been to my aunt and uncle's house. So, because they left a little bit before me, I put the address in my GPS. Yeah. All right. Not just my GPS, but specifically Google Maps. Now, the funny thing was, y'all, when I got to the house, they hadn't gotten there. Come on. Wow. Come on. Y'all gonna catch me in a moment. Yeah. yeah, see, okay, let me do it like this. See, they took 70, they took 166 to 75 to I-20, going on I-20 to get to Congress. Well, Google Maps told me to take 75 south. All right. They went 75. No, oh, y'all not no talk. They went up to get over. Y'all better hear me. They went up. To get what? Over. But I had to go 280. It took me 75 south. All right. Y'all feel me in a minute. They went 75 north. They were going up to go over. I had to go down to go over. Lord, I need to talk to somebody right there. Because you don't understand why it looks like you are going down to get over. But God says, I'm getting ready to accelerate your life past where you've been. Even if it looks like you're going down, I'm now going up. Oh, just understand, you're going to get where you're going. Because I see stuff you don't see. And what I found out when they got to talking, when they finally got to the house, they said, well, how did you get here before we got here? You must have been speeding. I said, no, nah, baby, I wasn't speeding. I just went the direction that the map told me to go. I went the direction that the GPS told me to go. In other words, let me talk spiritual. No, we go in the direction that God's positional system is telling us to go. While they're going the way that they think it ought to go. While they're doing it, but when they think it ought to be done, God's taking you a different direction. Yes. Some of y'all the holler might be the long way around, but I'm gonna get there. I told you, if you're going to trust the process, you got to get over your why. 
Stop worrying about why you had to go this route. And just thank God he got you there anyway. Can I tell you all something else? If you don't trust the process, the Lord told me to tell you to get past your how. That's yeah. good, sir. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I said, if you're going to trust the process, you're going to have to get over your house. Yeah. Yeah. Get over your house. This one right here is specifically for you. Y'all just get to eat Trump. God said to tell you, get over your house. What do you mean, how? How is it going to happen, God? How are you going to do what you said? How is this process going to work?
time to go now, y'all. But the children of Israel were in a position where they were there for 40 years. Caleb had to steal the people and tell them we can take it. But what they did not know was that there was going to be a process. I came to preach to somebody and tell you that your process might seem wrong right now. But trust. Let me go down so I can get covered with heart. Trust your season. Trust the process. God told me to tell you that you gotta trust the process. How am I gonna trust the process? I'm learning how to trust my God in season. Out of season, I'm gonna trust God. You might be in your flourishing season right now, but I come to tell you my comeback season is. Yeah. <laughs>